Okay, so Heard with another break to go 7 3 up from 2 1 down. They've gone on a 6 1 run to really take control of this game. 7 3 to them. And we are told with some of the system issues that we've been having that it might be that you haven't heard our lovely voices up to this stage. So we'll reintroduce ourselves. My name is Sean Colfer, commentating with Harry Mason. Uh, how do you think the game's gone so far, Harry? Um, I think it's gone well for her so far, clearly. Though <laughs> I do think there's a little bit more they can tighten up before they have to face Reading in the next game. Nemesis, having played Reading previously, maybe a little bit tired. Came out quite strong for the first couple of points. And then Heard seemed to figure out how to stop them. We'll see if they can do so here. Nemesis put on another strong line here. Some of their strongest players. But Ota, who has been fantastic for them so far in this game, can't quite reel that in. And Cleesby, one of the Heard captains, turns down a deep shot. It's a poach downfield. But Heard siphon it around the handlers instead. Liang with the disc. Goes to Galloway. Liang again. It does seem as though Reed's mark has not been close to him very much so far on this point. You can see Carrier kind of looking for space that he can poach off into, but Reed gets the disc again. Heard make more yards. Cleesby throws one deep. Looks like it's going to be trailing out. Good block by Isaacson, one of the Nemesis captains in the back of the end zone there. You feel if the disc had been thrown slightly more infield, there may have been an opportunity for the box. Heard player was there first, but. When you're right on the sideline, you sort of have no option. You just have to go for the reach. Yeah, it was tough for Stewart to try and pull that in. It was a, a difficult spot at the back of the end zone. And Isaacson is tall, used his height very well there. As Ota isolated at the front of the stack again. That throw was for her, I think, but Carrier spots it and is able to come and back it up. Good handler D by Stewart, but the throw comes out to Isaacson anyway. Carrier attacks the open side. You can hear from the sideline, the Nemesis players yelling, where's the deep cut? Isaacson on the disc. Back over with Cook. Goes to Ota, but there is a pick call. I suspect that this might stay with Ota and Liang just catch up. Do. Um, see Cook getting involved there. Cook, I believe, the only Newcastle uh, player out of this Nemesis team. Everyone else in Durham. Oh, I was in New Newcastle University. Uh, for Cook, yes, oh. I believe. And okay. I think everyone else. Uh, I was chatting to Annie Glasspool, who of course has coached a lot of the UQT uh, Durham University coach. Very proud of them playing for Horizon myself this weekend. But um, you know, a lot of these players can credit a lot of the skills they've shown here today um, and their ultimate careers to some of her coaching at least. So there looks to be some discussion here on whether Liang was close enough to call that pick. And she is indeed catching up after some discussion with Carrier. Oh, is she catching up? Yes, everyone's slapping hands and she is catching up. So there we go. Pick called. There's the Nemesis offense trying to make an inroads to get back into the game. So Ota on the disc. Ota looks deep. Galloway is there. And Clap catches it in front of... Vesta, a fairly straightforward catch for Galloway. He's looking for an option. Goes up line to Cleesby, but nothing downfield for Cleesby. Inside Stewart. Stewart to Galloway. Heard moving the disc nicely here. And Reed shoots deep to try and find Ellsby. But Carrier basically dropped off as soon as Reed caught it. Went with the cutter rather than staying with the disc and was able to just get in front and not let Ellsby reel that one in. Very good um, disc intelligence there to see as a really clear open field option. I can try and go for the point block, but it's open side, so much better to drop off and put some pressure. You see Ellsby cluttering up the underneath lane. Cook goes deep with her hands in the air, but doesn't come. And there's a turnover on the sideline for Nemesis. Looked as though... It just sailed slightly, and while Jennings got his hand on it, he couldn't quite wrap around. As we see, it sails slightly. Jennings can't get the left hand on it, and then it just drops 
so he can't get the second chance bid. Cleesby resets to Liang in the middle of the field. Just off the offensive brick mark. Back over to Cleesby. Cleesby looking for an option. And comes to Galloway. Heard push back to halfway. Cleesby on the disc again to Ellsby. Stewart can't quite catch that. It's a bit low. Can't bring it in. And it's another chance for Nemesis's O line here. It's uh, another attritional point, Harry. Yeah, they're both working hard at it. But you kind of feel a lot of the turns aren't aside from Carrier's defense. Not a lot of pressure. With that, the disc goes long. What a great throw from Isaacson. Just goes over Elsby's head. Elsby closes back to Cook, and it looks as though it is a timeout taken by Adam Jennings. So with the teams taking a quick break, we will also take a quick break, and we'll be back with you soon. on the move? You can keep up to date with Ulti TV on all of our social media channels. Like, follow, subscribe, share us with a friend or send us a message just to say hey. Thank you for supporting us in our mission to grow ultimate everywhere. Hello and welcome back to UK Nationals in Nottingham. We are watching the second game of the day here. Thundering Herd playing in their first game of the day against Nemesis, who played earlier against Reading and lost. Uh, no shame there, Reading one of the best teams in Europe. Herd currently 7-3 up, but Nemesis O-line has taken a timeout just off centre from the brick mark, looking to score to get themselves back into this game. What do we think we're going to see at this timeout, Harry? Last time Nemesis took a timeout, we saw them just go long instantly. <laughs> yeah, we did. See if we can see that again. On the other hand, half is at eight, and so Nemesis do really want to put this in, especially because I believe they started the game on offense, and so they'll have to come out of defense after half. Yeah. So we see Nemesis set up here. Isaacson is the dump. He's been touching the disc a lot for them. Ota is one of the most dangerous downfield players at the back of the stack. And Carrier has been one of their key athletes. He is in the middle of the stack. So they're spacing things out slightly. Her bracketing the back of the stack. You can see Elsby and Liang on each side. This comes back in. And they go with a hammer to Carrier. Ota tries to get to the front cone. Can't quite get there before the mark. Cleesby locks up on the front. And that is a great D from Stewart. Knocks it away from Isaacson. And get the turnover for her. The timeout. Got generated some movement nice and quickly, the play out of the timeout, but the, the reset kind of failed them there after that. Galloway with the disc. Two her players cutting into the space. As we see Ota poaching and Galloway throws basically straight to Jennings there. It's Nemesis setting up a poach in the handler set, and it looked to have foxed Herd's handlers completely. So Isaacson picks it up. We're looking for an isolation on the front. Goes to Jennings, who is able to extend out that left hand and catch it this time around. Nice catch and a much needed hold for the Nemesis O-line. Yeah, I really like that defensive play. Otto was um, in the lane. And then Jennings, rather than um, just follow his player, clearly the handler wanted to clear out. He stayed in that lane to stop the swing. And a nice leading pass for the score, an eight turn point there. Another one where the herd o 
D-line, sorry, hasn't scored, but they've really made the Nemesis O-line work for it. It's the tough, tough yards they're having to uh, grind out with their 17-person squad, heard with 26 players, so a significant advantage in legs. We said earlier, I think when you couldn't hear us, that that could be a significant advantage, and it's certainly seeming that way at the moment. I don't think the Nemesis D-line has managed to generate a break score yet. They've generated a couple of turns, yep. but they haven't managed to turn it into anything. And so this will be a huge time to try and get one on the board for Nemesis. Yeah, Herd's O-line with four turns in this half so far. So pretty good performance from them off offensively, but you're right, Harry. The Nemesis D-line has been struggling a little to generate sustained pressure. Vix Wilby picks up the pull. It's a zone from Nemesis. Back to Ong. Ong with the disc. In the center of the field, surveying his options. Littler goes back to Ong. There's Taylor. Heard moving the disc quite quickly. Zhao has loads of space in the center, but you can see two Nemesis players looking right at her. They are trying to bait that throw. As Ong throws through the zone to Taylor, who turns down the throw to Zhao. A little bit of contact, but it looks like everyone's happy enough to carry on. Little with a disc to Ong. Ong over to Wilby, and Wilby to Zhao, who's found space on the sideline. Ong. Taylor. Nemesis have called match. So with Littler now, back over to Taylor, center of the field. There's a pick called. And there's a mismatch here. You can see in the end zone, Zhao being marked by Flower. And have they got? Oh, there's there. Yep. Holmes in the end zone, poaching off. Must have been the deep in the zone and hasn't been able to come out and reset the D. Taylor. Things slow down a little for Hurd, and Taylor can't find Wilby. And after working through the zone really well, the flip to match has generated a turn for Nemesis. Yeah, they used the gender mismatch uh, chances for Nemesis, able to take on the male matching player. And Hurd is stopping any instant shots. Make her take a few more passes. And what's the turn? Holmes long, speaking of which. Yeah, Holmes is immediately shot deep. And that is a good catch from Huang. Ran it all the way down, and that's... A big break for Nemesis, 7-5 now, and that's their first break of the game. Yeah, that is huge momentum-wise for the defensive line to come out. You know, maybe their first look at their zone didn't quite work, although they quite liked throwing it out as an option. And then turn on and off to see if there's some separation long. Let's take it. We've been saying that the discs have been overthrown slightly on the deep shots from both teams, and that one was beautifully executed, hung for just enough time so that Huang could get underneath it and she ran it down. Nice easy score. Big moment of the game, this one. As you said earlier, Harry, this is point for half, 7-5 to Herd, one more point, they take half and come back out on offense. So kind of a mini break immediately. But Nemesis are gonna be coming out with their, their heads high here after their first break of the game. It's also interesting because I don't know if Nemesis have enough of a squad size to really be playing O and D line in the same amount. So maybe they bring on some of their more O line players with that speed to uh, force something against Heard. It'll be interesting if they bring out the zone again or if they stick with match. It will. Ota with the disc and Isaacson seem to make some kind of indication to the sideline that some play was coming. So we may, may well be seeing the zone here. A good pull from Ota. Will be to Jackson. And it is indeed the zone. Jackson back to Spearing. Spearing goes over the top to Jackson. Cliff has taken up a space in the middle. Jackson goes through the zone to Cliff. And Cliff doesn't take any chances. Comes back to Willby. Spearing. Back to Jackson on that far side. 
Big space in the middle here again for Cliff, and Jackson throws to him. The deep drops off rather than try and compete. And Zhao with the disc. Zhao back to spearing. And Nemesis gone back to match again. We saw last time it was enough to get them a turn, but a good catch from Cliff to save possession there with the left hand. Back to spearing. Spearing looking at the end zone. To Jackson in the center, or close to the center. Spearing with the disc again. And Spearing shoots to Zhao, and Zhao tries to go one-handed, I think, expecting it to go further out than it actually went. It was coming towards her, and it just hits the arm and hits the turf. And again, Hurd can't quite execute that end zone set. Certainly not the easiest catch as well, but you have to sort of feel you make the most of those, just go with two hands in the end zone. So, so Nemesis coming back out looking for another break. That would really change the complexion of this game. Running down this break side. Disc with Fester. Back to Isaacson. Isaacson finds space downfield. Sorensen with the disc. He looks back. Isaacson free backwards. Fester again. And a hand block from Matt Butler. Fester trying to break the mark. Can't get it around without Butler swatting it away. He doesn't look very active. He has his hands quite low. He wants to try and trick the player and suddenly rise it to match where the throw is coming to. And a timeout called by Jackson. Heard taking a timeout to talk through the issues they've been having with that end zone set to try and convert for half. So again, as the players take a quick break, so will we, and we'll be back with you shortly. We are a group of ultimate players, coaches, and video enthusiasts. We've worked with the major federations and the greatest events. We're on a mission to make Ultimate huge. We want our videos and live streams to be free to watch. We want to make stories that not only reach you, but also reach people outside the Ultimate community. Like and subscribe, Ultimate TV, the best in the world. Become a member and, and fund, fund our, our work, work to cover more events in the future and to bring more stories and live coverage to the eyes of the ultimate world and, and beyond. All right, welcome back to Nottingham. A couple of technical issues, but we are back with you and heard out of the timeout, kept hold of this for quite a long time on the end zone, but another miscue in their end zone set. And Nemesis with a shot at trying to score a break, also with a disc, but it looks as though it was Lauren Jackson just looking over the wrong shoulder to try and find the disc. So it's a uh, Hurd's O-line with another opportunity, and we are seeing this Nemesis zone again. And Nemesis really liking to try and hit those quick turns and those big shots, and I think that's right for them. Jackson was in a lot of space, just looked over the wrong shoulder. 
Another Jackson, Tom Jackson for Hurd, picking up the disc. Tom Cliff behind the zone in lots of space again. And that is exactly where Tom Jackson goes. Cliff, again, not taking any risks. Comes back to Jackson in the zone, resets. Will be on the far side. Jackson kind of s drops off to try and make those throws over the top a little more difficult. Disc with spearing now. Cliff attacks the cup. Jackson drops into space. Nice hammer over the top from Spearing. Jackson pointing where he wants Butler to go and takes that deep shot as the rain starts coming down. Butler in the end zone, reads it well, catches it over Rota, and that is half for Hurd. A tough end to the half. Looked like there was a few issues with their offense, but they will take an 8-5 lead going into half and a coming out 0 to start, I would say, Harry. Yeah, Hurd taking the right option there. Pointing, identifying the mismatches. I actually think that was the nicest they've worked through a zone so far as well. Like they've taken a lot of passes to get to, to be frank, with no win. What they should be getting to a little bit quicker. Mm. That looks a little bit more like what I would expect in these conditions for players of her talent to go to. With that said, that transition to the zone has been working for Nemesis. They've got a few great backs. They've been coming out strong, and it looks like we're probably into a good second half. Yes, looks like it as we. Uh, we're talking about the conditions and it's now uh, out of nowhere really really wet there's a lot of rain so the teams retreat into some cover for half time i think we will take a quick break because the teams are breaking for half but we will be back with you soon on the move? You can keep up to date with Ulti TV on all of our social media channels. Like, follow, subscribe, share us with a friend or send us a message just to say hey. Thank you for supporting us in our mission to grow ultimate everywhere. We are a group of ultimate players, coaches, and video enthusiasts. We've worked with the major federations and the greatest events. We're on a mission to make Ultimate huge. We want our videos and live streams to be free to watch. We want to make stories that not only reach you, but also reach people outside the Ultimate community. Like and subscribe, Ultimate TV, the best in the world. Become a member and fund, fund our, our work, work to cover more events in the future and to bring more stories and live coverage to the eyes of the Ultimate world and, and beyond. beyond. Hello and welcome back again to Nottingham. The rain has subsided slightly in the halftime break. And there are the match stats with 15 turns to 18. Four breaks for Hurd is really the key thing there though, Harry. It is. Interestingly, Nemesis do have an extra clean hole from Thundering Hurd, but it is that Thundering Hurd D-line that's been able to take the most of the breaks that has currently made the difference with that said, so feel the first half of that half, as it were, the first quarter, an intellectual might call it. Mm, that would be an easy way of describing it. Yes. Um, Hurd definitely seemed in control. Then I think at 5-2 to Hurd, there was a very smart timeout. Yeah. And from that, Nemesis have looked like a little bit of a different team. Yeah, yeah, certainly when they switched to that zone. Uh, they look, look better, got back into it, got a break. But that 6-1 run for Hurd in the middle of that first half currently the difference as we see Nemesis preparing to come out on D to start the second half big pull from Holmes Spearing goes back to catch in her own end zone and throws to Ong Nemesis come back out with this zone Ong to Taylor 
Littler and Taylor both occupying the same space, but they split, and Littler comes back for the disc. Over to Spearing with loads of space on this sideline. Taylor. And Spearing playing catch through the cup. Back to Wong now. Wong to Littler, turns down the throw onto the sideline to Butler. Instead, pops it back to Ong. No one occupying, uh, as I say, no one occupying that space in the middle. Zhao takes off the position there. Ed leaves, Ed Taylor leaves his feet to secure possession there. And it's with Spearing on this near sideline closest to the cameras. Littler to Ong, to Taylor, back to Ong. Her taking a lot of passes to go through this. It's a nice zone from Nemesis, but her look like they've worked it out now. Littler to Ong. Turns down the throw to Spearing. Instead comes inside, middle of the pitch to Taylor. And Butler to Littler and Ong. Heard inside the brick mark now, in that red zone that they've struggled slightly to execute in. Comes back to Ong. Stack is a long way away and we can see a poach there from Holmes just to try and shut down that lane, but an inside throw to Spearing. Spearing looking to the end zone. Clements reels it in. Good catch above her head with pressure coming in behind. A lot of passes to hold that, but it's a good start to the half for Thundering Herd. Yes, I think that end zone was a lot cleaner than some of the other Thundering Herd offenses we've seen so far at the end zone. You could tell there was distinct, clear cuts, different options. You could tell there's only one person in the space. That person clears out. Another person comes into that space. There's a little bit of poaching from Nemesis. They have to be aware of that there's enough space there that it doesn't matter. Yep, definitely. And good body control at the front of the end zone there. You could see the defender comes in to try and get a block. Realizes he's not going to get there and pulls out rather than causing contact. 30 passes for Thundering Herd on that point. Uh, disciplined offense. I think it's good. that's a good point for both teams, to be honest with you. That's the kind of thing you want out of the zone, right? Yeah, I mean, you want to take a lot of passes. And there was at least one or two that were a little bit more risky that Herd had to take. Mm. Um, you could argue sort of they didn't, I believe, have John Jackson on that line who managed to go over the zone very well. That might be something that other Herd players need to start to do as well. But with that said, they were able to work through it and then have a clean offense. So, you know, a lot of props to them for dealing with that. We'll see. Do Nemesis keep coming out with the zone? If it works, it works. So Herd's D-line coming back out now. Captain Sean Regan with a big pull and Nemesis fielding, in their, fielding it in their own end zone. Comes over to Bull on this near side. Looking for carrier upfield, marked by Lung. No space there. It's a tight mark as well from Huy Hua and Regan comes through, knocks it away and catches the Callahan. On the second attempt, I don't think he was going for the Kahan necessarily. He was trying to get the run through block, but he pops it up for himself. Yes, it's one of those where you're not allowed to hit it to yourself intentionally for yards, but two hands forward does not look like he was trying to catch it anyway. No, no. Just guarantee the turn and the disc stayed in the air. You take the Callahans where you can get them. It's where the opposite team just throws to your team in the end zone. It's an instant score. Will not go down on the assists, so... Just a score for Sean Regan there. Yeah, Callahan goal. You do not see them very frequently, but as we see, Regan reads that as soon as it comes out of the hand of Bull. Storms in, knocks it away, catches the Callahan. Now, obviously, he deserves a lot of the credit there, but it was the previous 10 seconds of defense. Oh, yeah, yeah. That had earned at least the turnover for her. Some very good upfield marking, particularly I saw uh, running against Carrier. Yeah shutting down an option Nemesis have been using so far meant that Bull was under a little bit of pressure, kind of had to take the shots and be able to close it down. Good mark from Hui Wan Hua as well, extending her arms out, making it difficult for Bull. Bull definitely double clutched one throw. But as you say, good team D from Hurd, but it is Sean Regan with the Callahan getting all the glory. So Osterval pull for Hurd coming out on D again after what is pretty much a perfect start to the first, the second half. More good dump D from Hurd. Stewart marks something out. Nice find though. Out to Holman. Holman goes deep. It looked as though 
Giblin turns to come back, tries to tow it in. Great attempt, but can't quite make the catch and keep his feet in. It was very interesting there. Holman faked the long shot and then waited. And by the time he took the second shot, you feel the space had kind of closed out a bit. We could see the disc had to go right to the back of the end zone. Maybe if he'd taken the first, mm. he'd have had a bit more space to play with. He just had to holster by the time that the second option came around. I think even if Giblin catches that, looking pretty close to the back of the end zone as Tandu with a nice break to McKenzie. McKenzie with a very flat, deep throw, but Stewart was waiting for it to come to him too long and Spanton's able to get in front and knock it away. Stewart playing great lockdown D on the mark, but the deep shot goes. And Spalman with a double happiness reels it in in the back of the end zone with a nice catch. That is a lovely shot. We've seen with a few of these how difficult it is to hit those spaces. The disc is just carrying. And that disc just sailed right to the back corner really where you want to find someone nothing the defense could really do yeah you can see spots the space throws it exactly pretty much that's pretty much the only space in the end zone where his player has an advantage there it's a an excellent find an excellent spot after nemesis struggling slightly to reset the disc at this point Herds d on those dumps is very good but they are taking shots downfield and some of them are paying off divot Hello and welcome back. Thundering Herd executing on offense while we were away. Thundering Herd executing on offense while we were away. It was a nice, a nice uh, job of working through all the way up to the end zone. A turnover with a shot and then good dump D force to turn and then an immediate shot into the end zone. Look, that was a miscommunication because Tom Cliff was wide open for the score. Yeah, there was a little bit of Nemesis frustration as well, I think, that it was so unmarked. So I think they do have a plan for that situation, but you know, it's the end of a second game in a row. And the pull is going to just tail out of bounds, look like that landed on the line. So Nemesis will bring it on, it landed in. A great pull. So Reed on the mark with this herd zone. Forcing a throw into the center. <laughs> Galloway tries to attack it and be decisive. But the disc sails over his head. And a deep shot that hung a bit. But there was no one in the vicinity. Spanton takes it down. She's had a good second half. But tell you what, didn't have a good point there. The herd zone. I mean, you say that. There was definitely a bit of a risky shot over the top. True. I think Herd just thought, we've got that deep. We've got the turn. Um, very well read by Nemesis to take it down, to you know, not give up on it until the end. We've seen that from Nemesis. There's a few players now. They don't give up on a disc until it's right at the end. You know, sometimes even if they bobble it, they'll bid for the second one. And you've just got to keep an eye on them for that. Still going. They are 11-7 down, as Harry said. They played a game this morning. They're coming back-to-back -back into this game. So they have been going for well over, well, about two hours at this point. They've been basically running the whole time, so I'm sure they're feeling it. But still going to try and get back into this game as Hurd's O-line is coming out to try and ensure that they don't. I mean, 11-7, I've seen this score come back from plenty of times before, and with the rules we have here, of when the buzzer goes, you play to the score plus one. The game is never over till it's over. Yep, yep. So, under 10 minutes now before the cap goes on. Herd's offense coming down to try and secure another point. Will we walking towards the disc? With Clements and Spearing upfield. This comes to Spearing. Spearing throws the inside to Taylor. Taylor turns down the shot to Clements, but goes at the second time of asking, but just too low for Clements to bring in. And a turnover again for Herd's O-line. Nemesis is going to be looking to try and put this one in. That was a big bid there on the force. And arguably a easy break throw, but it was a pick there on the field. Yeah, Spanton coming under. And it looked as though Spanton and Flower just crossed path slightly and will be had to stop. So we reset this coming back in on two.
Hurley looking for options. Pops that one up slightly. And Gilwin just couldn't bring it down under the pressure from Littler, who gets his hand on the disc to knock it away. This is somewhere we've seen the herd defense be very effective as well, is that first pass. Yeah. I think if Nemesis get out of that first pass or second pass, they've been okay, but they've struggled to deal with that herd defense because herd now have an offense for the end zone. Ong goes over the top towards Butler, but a good poach block from Holmes, not marking Butler, came from the stack, reaches over the top to knock it away. Nice block from Holmes. This just sat in the air quite a bit there, potentially a more direct disc. Could have seen the goal, but hard to know that sometimes. It was very good avoidance of body contact while getting the D from Holmes. So Nemesis, as Harry said, have been struggling slightly to start their offense. Once they get in flow, they're look looking pretty good, but it's starting the flow that's proving it tricky. As Hurley goes deep, or tries to go deep, and it comes out all wrong, and the disc does go quite far, but most of the way on the ground. On to Littler on this near side. Back in the middle to Ong. He's looking for an option. Butler comes under. To Wilby. Wilby comes to Ong, who's open on the open side. And Ong goes deep, looking for Taylor. Holmes is there. He's got a good 1D already in this point. Great feet by Ed Taylor at the back of the end zone. Good spirit by Holmes, calling it a goal immediately. And that is another hold by Thundering Herd. Sure that disc was ever in bounds, but of the uh, head player reaching far over, it did mean there was just no chance for the defense on that shot. Yep, it's uh, an expansive throw from Ong, but we see Ed Taylor reading it well, reaching all the way out and towing it in at the back of the end zone. So 12 7 to Hurd now. A good second half for them so far, Harry. I mean, coming into the second half, 8-5 up. Now 12-7, extended that lead slightly with another break. Look like they're playing pretty well at the moment. It is just one break difference, but Nemesis had to win this half and they had to win it by a lot. Um, the way that the format works here is there are pools of three teams, and if you come third, there's no crossover back up. Yep. So this will, the loser of this game, depending of course on how Herd do against Reading, yes. um, may effectively be sealed in the 9-12 to 12 bracket. So this is the chance to earn a guaranteed spot at top eight. Yep, this is basically straight to quarterfinals. So the loser, or the third place team, as Harry says, is locked in that consolation pool, which both teams will be trying to avoid. So Nemesis back out on offense, Jennings on the disc as Heard throw their own zone. Elsby and McKenzie at the front. Isaacson, it's a nice inside throw and they're going straight through the middle of this zone and Heard, you hear the crumble call. Heard have gone to match. People looking for their matchups and Heard are now in a match set. Not much movement happening for Nemesis here. Cook finds Isaacson, whose lefty throwing has been Nemesis's best way of generating yards. Nice, delicate inside throw to Bull. Bull down the break side. Jennings with the disc, just outside the end zone. Lovely pop over the top. Ellsby can't quite get there, and Cook scores the point. I think you can tell that Durham is quite a windy place, and they're used to playing against zones, because that was, I think, some of the smoothest offense I've seen from Nemesis. Yeah, that was nice really able to make use of the full space players waiting for the next continuation pass as well to make Hurd have to work very hard to reset that zone once it's gone past the first line of defense and then able to keep that flowing to the end zone once they've come once they're not trapped in that initial corner I'll be intrigued to see if Hurd throw that again yeah that 2-3-2 two, two that's worked so well for Hurd for a number of years not really working there as Nemesis found that space split the person in the middle and went straight through the center of the D. So Nemesis will be looking to get their second break of the game. So far in this half, Herzo pretty good, but they have turned it over three times. That was also the most passes we've seen by a Nemesis offense. I believe 17 passes, very well worked, very patient. It's nice to see they have that arrow to their bow as well. Mm. 
Yeah, they've been taking a lot of shots, but that time, nice and calm all the way down until they had a wide open space to throw into. Maybe that's what Herdwood Bank is about. Is, is, are they taking yeah, maybe. Long shots? Maybe. Let's put out a zone to stop that instant long shot. It's not, certainly not a bad idea. Yeah, yeah. You can see the logic. But it didn't work. So pull from Nemesis, and it'll be spearing, catching, and centering to Jackson. And they clear the center of the field, and Taylor comes into the center, into that space. Looking downfield, but no options. Throws the inside to Wilby. Looks downfield. Hasn't got any options there, though. It comes wide to Taylor. Taylor down the line to Cliff. Cliff looking for a dump. Wilby goes offline. Has space. Good catch just outside the end zone. Spanton can't quite get there. So Wilby looking for an option in the end zone now. Looks to come back to Jackson, but Jackson goes up the line. Manages to get past Hurley and scores on the front cone. A good quick point by the Hurd O-line there. And you've got to say one by the legs of the O-line there as well. Just open side passes, nothing too difficult but consistently managing to get around the Nemesis defense's players and provide that easy option up the line. Yeah, a nice score for Hurd as we have under a minute left. So this next point will be, you would imagine, the final one before the cap comes on. 13-8 to Hurd. Of course, again, just for any uh, parents watching at home, this means if Hurd score during this point, it'll be a game to 15. If Nemesis score during this point, it will be a game to 14. Yes, exactly. So we are nearing the end now. Nemesis really going to have to start getting some of the breaks that they've been struggling to get. They have won. They've had a couple of opportunities in the second half, but haven't really been able to make much headway in trying to get a second. Well. Nemesis came 11th at Nationals last year, and so they're looking to build on that this year. Come a little bit higher 